Hello, my name's Adrian Wooten. I'm the Chief Executive of Film London, and I'd really like to welcome you to the 2021 Film London Jarman Award. At Film London, we're so very pleased to be presenting this 14th year of the Jarman Award, the prestigious prize celebrating the work of the UK's foremost artist filmmakers. It's vital that we continue to protect and support artists to challenge perceptions, push creative practices, and have their voices and those of the communities they represent heard. In this programme, we're looking forward to telling you about the award. We'll show you the six extraordinary artistic practices that make up our 2021 shortlist. We'll hear from some previous Jarman Award winners who've moved forward in their careers and special guest Jarman Award patron and major international artist John Confra will announce the winning artist for 2020. One. Well, Derek Jarman has been very inspiring to me because he was an artist, a cinematic kind of visionary who experimented, but also he was an activist and he fought and made films for the things that he believed in. There's so few initiatives that recognise and celebrate artist film, which is in the run of the mill. Because the German Award stands for that, this protean, productive space in which different kinds of people come together to say, we want to find another way of doing things. Just for that symbolic thing alone, that's important. It's a real honour for us to continue to celebrate work that encapsulates the legacy of experimentation and innovation of British filmmaker, artist and activist Derek Jarman. Our sincere thanks go to the Jarman Estate for making this possible. I'd also like to extend my thanks to our Jarman Award patrons, John Confra, Terence Davis, Rupert Everett, Dexter Fletcher, Hitane Patel, Tony Peake, Tilda Swinton and Toya Wilcox. Over the years, the Jarman Award has a history of shining a light on exceptional work in the moving image, and I'd like to welcome some of our previous winners to reflect on the impact the award has had on them. Being nominated for the Jarman Award was a real, um, it really helped bring our work to a much wider audience and actually really helped raise our profile. We were nominated for the Turner Prize 2021, the recognition is a step in the right direction for the marginalised groups that we work with. Hopefully we're part of a much bigger uh, movement towards greater diversity and representation uh, in art and culture. Since I had the immense good fortune to receive the Jarman Award in 2016, I've dreamt many times about my dead dogs coming back to life. The Jarman Award's primary gift is that it validates your oddities, wherever and however they lead you, and it also helps you to fund them. These are the major supports an artist needs. Recently I made a show for Tate. I started assembling all these bits to make all kinds of transformations, fantasies, metamorphoses and mutant creatures. In a way, I don't know how it got there, but you could see it tomorrow if you wanted to. In a way, you'd be stepping inside my brain. Winning the Jarman Award uh, did feel like a bit of a turning point in, in my visibility as an artist. And, and lots of exciting things have continued to happen since then. Uh, my film, Don't Look at the Finger, won the Best International Film at the Kino de Kunst Festival. And more recently, I was commissioned by Circa to create a new work for the Piccadilly Light Screen. Uh, and it'll also go out on screens in Tokyo, in Seoul, in Milan, and in Times Square in New York and it's kind of an ode to my grandmother. Um, you know, as, as the older generations of immigrants in the UK pass away, I certainly worry about what it is that we're losing, you know, culturally and, and socially. A huge congratulations to all of the artists that have been nominated uh, this year for the Jarman Award. It continues to be a joy ever since the beginning of the award to see so many artists that I look up to and admire 
uh, being celebrated in this way. Thank you. I would also like to say a big thank you to all at Film London, in particular the Flamin' team, for all their hard work on realising the award programme this year. And my very sincere gratitude goes to our funders, Arts Council England, to our award partners, the Whitechapel Gallery, collaborators Circa at Piccadilly Lights, and of course the Jarman Award tour venues across the UK, which exhibited the work of our shortlisted artists. Finally, I'd like to thank the Jarman Award jury members for sharing their time, expertise and knowledge. Now, I would like to welcome Ivona Blaswick, director of the Whitechapel Gallery, Jarman jury member and friend of Film London, to say a few words and introduce our shortlist. This year's shortlisted artists came together through the height of the 2020 pandemic. It was our almost impossible task to select just six artists from what was truly a cinematic feast. The artists we selected are characterised by their audiovisual sophistication, their urgent narratives, and the reflection they inspire on the nature of subjectivity, history, and memory. They were all the more vivid for being seen in lockdown. Each artist opens a portal into an astonishing world where protagonists might dance, navigate or debate the legacies of modernism, empire and identity in an age of unprecedented consumption. Some mourn the passing of an epoch or an idea. Others imagine wholly different futures from a new geopolitical perspective. We have Larry Akiampong, who transforms an abandoned supermarket in Leighton into a performance space where a dancing figure and a percussive soundtrack combine a physical urge to move with the elaboration of multiple discourses. I guess at the heart of my practice, I'm interested in conversations that relate to the, the digital age from both a kind of contemporary perspective, but then also diving through history. Beyond the substrata is an explosion of feelings towards kind of like rise of nationalism as a result of the, the, the Brexit vote through to the continued legacies of, of racism, of colonisation um, and how they affect the black body. And so I wanted to explore that through movement. I approached uh, Kanika Sky, who is a professional pointe ballet dancer. I would talk to her about uh, traditional uh, dances right through to thinking about, you know, influences towards clowning to address this feeling of mountain tension. White as an angel is the English child. But I am black as if bereaved of light. Do you know who made you? Led by donkeys? Yes, but what would you do if I told you that while you pranced and paraded around this little old island, you were not born lions? Sophia Almeria also uses architecture to foreground a hypnotic and futuristic scenario that fuses poetry, performance, and the lyricism of an Arab cultural legacy. Astral Bodies Electric Makeup is an unusual work in my body of work, I suppose, because usually my work is very grounded in my research around history and also like the various imagined futures. And this is the work of pure fantasy. And that's one of the reasons why I was excited to share it in this context, because fantasy is something that has certainly kept me going during this year. Feel it climbing your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. Can you feel it? Beneath your belly button, the scar of separation from her and from it. A tear in space-time. The scar of the instant of your individual being. 
of creation, of choice, of ego. Yasmina Chibich revels in the aesthetic of modernist buildings while interrogating the subtle political and propagandistic ambitions embedded in their utopian structures. My practice focuses on the contemporary and historical relationship between culture and political power. Um, I'm quite obsessed with framing devices such as art and architecture that I kind of meticulously um, investigate via archives and transcripts. And I'd say within my works, I always attempt to draw a parallel between the construction of national, transnational culture, but also um, uh, its use value for political aims. And I'm mostly drawn uh, to architectures which were erected during moments of ideological identity crisis. tremendous challenges to our way of life. And these challenges cannot be met with so-called economic miracles. We are looking for a solution that will illuminate our differences and offer dramatic setting for our history's next act. Adam Faramawi explores skin as the space of eros, mutation and permeability, or a plant as a vehicle for narratives about migration and memory. It was simultaneously a liberating and a very challenging, difficult work to make. I started researching for it during the first lockdown, so we were all subject to this then novel and terrifyingly unknown virus. I was newly living alone, the Black Lives Matter demonstrations were in full force, and the hysteria in the news encouraged a lot of renewed racialized pressure on me and my peers in both personal and professional spheres. And in this tumultuous mess, my father passed away. I couldn't even attend his funeral in Egypt, uh, having to make do with live streaming his wake, which was hosted by some of his friends on YouTube. The work became a meditation on this time where death felt and still feels very close, and the only space to breathe was on these walks on the Wanstead Flats, which is a nature reserve near my home in East London. And it's a space that I hadn't really looked at so closely before. This was marshland once. Medieval monks grazed their sheep here. Then it became a less favoured royal forest. The corporation that is the city bought the land and drained it. After legal battles fought by local groups against owners of nearby farmland, the corporation protected the forest. Victorian families paraded here listening to music, played live on the bandstand. Guy Oliver focuses on just one year, 2016, and uses rhyming couplets in a mournful yet sardonic meditation on the deaths of iconic figures from cinema, sport, politics and music. My practice it is essentially exploring my relationship to popular culture and my place within it. Uh, I work with subjects such as politics, sport, news archive as a way of kind of exploring disorder beneath the surface of society and culture in general. For all artists, whether that you're a filmmaker or a novelist, you know, I think it's really important to ta tackle difficult subjects and to try and at least ask questions about culture and society. The subject of the film generally is about what we do w as a society with uh, disgraced cultural figures and also the, the work that the, they've, they've made and put out into the world. We only see in hindsight what people become There's other things in here made by other degenerate scum But some of it's quite good, which makes me quite confused I think about the people that they murdered and abused I'm an addicted compulsive collector I once found this wall of sound best up by Phil Spector Perhaps the greatest album you'll ever hear in your life was made by a man who's in prison for shooting his wife.
Georgina Starr scripts and directs entire casts of remarkable actors. She creates costumes, set designs, and breathtaking scenarios in her explorations of mythologies, cults, and alternative systems of belief. I've been working in Moving Image for about 30 years. Even in the very early works that I made, there was already a very strong focus on, on the body, on um, the instructional voice, uh, specifically the female voice, and an unravelling of, of memory and um, film fiction and film history. So in Count 10, we follow two women who pass through um, an arboreal portal and they find themselves inside a, a multi-level school of instruction, like a, a place of learning. Their work started um, quite a few years ago as paintings and drawings and also ideas for live performance works. Altogether, these six artists represent an astonishing zeitgeist, a state of the art of moving image today. Thank you very much, Ivona, for those fascinating insights into the shortlisted artist's work. Now, as the moment you've all been waiting for draws close, I'd like to introduce our very special guest and Jarman Award patron. One of the UK's most important and influential contemporary artists through his work as part of Black Audio Film Collective and Smoking Dogs, from seminal works like Hands With Songs to representing Ghana at the Venice Biennale, I'm delighted to welcome John Comfra to say a few words and introduce this year's awards. Over to you, John. Adrian, thank you so much for those very, very kind words. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm very, very happy to be able to be here in virtual form, if you will, to present uh, the winner. I was nominated for this once, and one of the things I remember happened around about this time, when it crossed my mind that I could win. It, it's fleeting, it just happens and you think, ooh, yeah, I've got it. I'm in with a chance here, you know. And whatever the outcome tonight, Whoever wins, hang on to that. Because that self-belief is what's going to get you through a huge amount. Congratulations to all of you for imagining this, for thinking that you could be winners, because you are, okay? Um, all right. The winner this year of the Jarman Award is Yasmina Sibic. And I'd like to invite Yasmina to say a few words to us. I thank the jury of the 2021 Jarman Award for giving my film, The Gift, the visibility to reach the audiences it is intended for and to fully realize its aim in developing its discussion platform of social political inquiry. 
The continued crisis on so many fronts has augmented all of our creative practices, and it is persistently challenging the possible. In this light, the Jarman Award highlights its namesake, Derek Jarman, a true guide to what resistance to power verticals should look and feel like. As we are entering into a period of enhanced self-censorship, we're second-guessing national agendas is once again shaping our culture capital. I accept this award with immense gratitude. I would like to deeply thank all the contributors to this film, from archives, institutions, cast, and crew, who all kept looking for possibilities of realization despite it seeming impossible. A big shout out to the producers standing so firmly behind me, Film London's Artist Moving Image, MacLeon, and Steirischer Herbst in Graz. An immense gratitude goes out to all the touring partners of the German Award 2021. Towner Eastbourne, Lux Scotland, Nottingham Contemporary, Spike Island in Bristol, G39 in Cardiff, the Mac Belfast, and the Whitechapel Gallery. You have also wonderfully mitigated the loss of our audiences, something without what our works do not exist. And thank you dearly to Film London's Artist Moving Image team, Maggie Ellis, Rose Cupid, Greta Hewison, and Duncan Poulton, for the incredible commitment to continue to shine the light on Artist Moving Image throughout this crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmina, and many congratulations to you and to the shortlisted artists. We look forward to hearing more about what will no doubt be wonderfully successful futures. Thank you all for joining us on this virtual platform. We look forward to seeing you all next year for the Jarman Award 2022. In the meantime, watch the wonderful work of the shortlisted artists streaming on our website now and until midnight on Thursday the 25th of November. We hope that you'll all stay safe and well. This has been Film London, Jarman Award 2021. Thank you and good night.